This example is going to use Kirchhoff's laws for circuits to solve a little more complicated uh, resistor network to find the current in each branch of the circuit. So we have a 20 volt battery. Coming out of the 20 volt battery there's a current I1 up to this junction. At the junction the current is going to separate into current I2 that goes through the 300 ohm and current I3 that goes through the 400 ohm. There's a middle branch from point A down to point B. There's a current I4 that I'm choosing to draw the arrow downward through this 100 ohm resistor. Then there's a current I5 that I've drawn going off to the right through the 200 ohm resistor <clears throat> and a current I6 going through the 500 ohm resistor. As we look at this, there are six unknown currents. So we'll need to generate six equations and then solve those to find the individual currents. As we start on this, I'd also like to note the plus and minus signs on the resistors. In this method, it is very important that you distinguish which is the plus side of the resistor and which is the negative for the purpose of the analysis. The way you decide is where a current comes into a resistor, that's where the plus sign goes. Where the current's coming out of the resistor, that's where the negative sign goes. So in this middle branch, there's a plus at the top of the 100 ohm and a negative at the bottom of the 100 ohm. As you do the analysis, if a current value comes up to be a negative number, that only tells you that the arrow should be reversed that the current physically is actually running in the opposite direction and by current I'm talking about conventional current. Conventional current or the eyes uh, as if positive charge was throwing through, going through the circuit. That's topic of another discussion. But let's start with our uh, equations here. So this junction on the left I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. There's another junction here for the I2 the I2 is equal to I4 plus I5. I2 comes into point A. I4 and I5 are leaving point A. So I2 is I4 plus I5. And then I3 plus I4 give us I6. So plus I3 plus I4, those two come into this junction and I6 goes out of the junction. The junction rule is that at a junction charge is neither created nor destroyed, so current is not created or destroyed. So the current that comes in must match the current that goes out. Now, loop uh, rules. So I'm going to have three loops that I choose, and there are more, comp more possibilities than I've selected here. It doesn't matter which loops you pick, as long as you don't repeat a loop, as long as your equations are not uh, dependent. So I'm choosing to start at the 20 ohm as a positive. Um, I'm going to start, let's say at this point, and I'm going to proceed around the circuit as I've drawn that dotted line. So I'm going from zero volts at the negative terminal of the battery to plus 20 on the positive side. Then I'm coming around and I'm going to go through this uh, 400 ohm resistor. So 400 times I3, that's the V equals IR the potential difference across here. Why is there a negative sign in front of this 400 times I3? Well we're going from the positive side of the resistor to the negative side of the resistor. So that's a drop in potential. This is a negative potential drop. <laughs> Those are redundant terms. But it's a potential drop that is a negative number. So minus the IR here is 400 times I3. And then I'm continuing on this bottom branch so 500 and I6, again I'm going from the positive side of the resistor to the negative side of the resistor, so that's a, a negative term. And now I'm on a wire that comes back to my starting point. The total change of potential around a closed loop is zero. So Kirchhoff's loop rule. Now I'm starting again, going up 20 volts. I'm going to go through the top branch now. So minus 300 I2 current in this 300 ohm is I2. Again, I'm going from the positive to the negative side. And now I'm going on the I5 uh, current path. So minus 200 I5. And again, I'm back to the starting point, zero. 
The where is this next branch involves I2, I4, and I3. I2, I4, and I3. So this time I'm starting here. I'm starting at that junction. So I have a negative 300 I2. I have a negative 100 I4 because I'm going from plus to minus. And now as I come back to my starting point, I'm going from the minus side of the resistor to the plus side of the resistor. That's a gain in potential, so it deserves a plus sign. And 400 is the resistance, I3 is the current in the 400 ohm resistor. So those are my six equations. Now it's mathematics, and start using uh, substitution to simplify things here. We can eliminate some of the, uh, the currents. We'll get back and calculate their values later. But I'm going to use equation 3 and get rid of the symbol I6. The equation 3 tells us I can replace I6 with I3 plus I4. So I'm going to do that in equation 4. I'm also going to divide by 10. So you have 20, 400, and 500. The numbers can be simplified a little bit. So I'm going to uh, divide by 10. And I get this equation. So instead of 20, I've got 2. Instead of minus 400, I've got minus 40. I've got the I3, minus 50. And now replace I6 with I3 plus I4. And now I'm going to take another substitution here. We'll get back to equation A later. I'm going to replace I2 in equations 5 and 6. Equation 5, again, I'm going to divide by 10. In equation 6, I can actually divide by 100 all the way through. So we'll get equations B and C. So in B, in dividing by 10, the I2 has been replaced with I4 plus I5. And we have uh, just the division by 10 and for the I5 term. For equation C, I'm dividing by 100. So minus 3, I2 has been replaced with I4 plus I5. Then 1, minus 1 times I4 just becomes minus I4. And 400 becomes 4, I3. OK, let's work with A, B, and C and uh, determine how we can simplify here. So first, I'm going to denote them with primes. I'm gathering like terms. I'm gathering like terms. So of equation A, I'm distributing minus 50 onto the I3 and minus 50 onto the I4. And now the I3 terms can be combined to give us net of minus 90. Same thing here for B. Distribute the minus 30 on the I4 and the I5. It is important that this minus sign is distributed as well as the 30. Gather together like terms, and the I5 now has a minus 50 coefficient. For uh, C prime, distribute the minus 3 through here. So minus 3I4, minus 3I5. And again, gather like terms. There's a minus 1I4 here, and a minus 3I4 gives a minus 4I4. The minus 3I5 and the 4I3 is still there. So now I have three equations and three unknowns. You'll see I3, I4, and I5 for those three equations. So next page, we do a little bit more work here and solve a system with three equations and three unknowns. So I'm going to start here by uh, eliminating I5 for the B prime and the C prime equations. And to do that, I'm going to multiply B prime by 3. And then I'm going to subtract 50 times C prime. So I can work with equations adding or subtracting them. That's the legal operation. But I want to do these multiplications to create coefficients that are same magnitude but opposite signs. So I'm showing the result here. This is 3 times the B prime. And now 50 minus 50 times the C prime we get here. And you'll notice here for the I5, I have a minus 150 I5. I have a plus 150 I5. So those add to 0. Gather together the like terms. I come up with equation D. Equation D. And we'll need this uh, uh, in a little bit. I'm going to use A prime and D to 
get rid of i3, to eliminate i3. And again, you might want to pause and back up the video to uh, see where these are coming from. But 200 times a prime delivers this set of terms. Minus 90 times d delivers this set of terms. And you have the d up here. So the minus 90 times 6 is the minus 40. Minus 90 times minus 200 is the plus 18,000. Minus 90 times 110 is minus 9,900. And then we're subtracting these two equations. 0 minus 0 is a 0. Simplify a little bit. We drop off the uh, I3 terms, gather together the coefficients on the I4s, gather together the numbers. And we find, finally, a result. I4 is minus 0.0070352 amps. I'm keeping extra digits here just to avoid round off errors. Um, you could round this off, but we'll do it this way. And we notice here I4 came up with a negative number. That's not a problem. That just tells us that the I4 arrow should be reversed when the, we look at the actual uh, currents on the circuit. Uh, but the number is fine. The minus sign just tells us that the arrow needs to be reversed in the drawing. And it's OK. Um, as long as you're consistent with your arrow directions, you can't actually draw them incorrectly at, as far as solving the problem. Just be consistent with the plus and minus signs on your resistors. Now, let's uh, use this I4 result. The D equation has I4 and I3. We know the value of I4, so let's go ahead and put that in. When you substitute in the value for I4, it does have a negative sign on it that you must include. And again, you should pause the video and uh, check this on your calculator by coming up with I3 of 0 0.026131 amps. Now let's solve for I6 using equation 3. Equation 3 related I3 and I4 to I6. <coughs> Excuse me. So we. Uh, are able to uh, combine these currents. And again, when the, I'll pull down this just a little bit, it's almost in view. So equation three, I3 plus I4 is equal to I6. I know I3 and I4, so let's go ahead and calculate I6. We do that, and we find that I6 is 0 0.019096 amps. And now we can solve for I2 using equation 6. Equation 6, just to remind you, is right here. It has I2, I4, and I3. And we have values for I4 and I3. So if we put those in, we find I2 is 0 0.037186 amps. Now we can solve for I1 using equation 1. And we come back here. I1 is I2 plus I3. We know the values for I2 and I3. So we put those in. We find I1 is 0 0.063317 amps. Now we can use equation 2. And I'm going to go back to it this time. We can solve for I5. We find that I5 is plus 0 0.044212 amps. So uh, only I4 had the problem of the negative sign. All the others I chose correctly for the uh, direction of the arrows. And we have the six currents. How can we check our work? I'm going to put up the circuit again here. So now with the values, the numerical values for the currents, and I've reversed the direction of I4, now writing this as a positive current. Um, so this is the way it actually traverses. Let's check our potential drops and see if we start over here at 20 volts, do we end up at 0 volts for both branches of the, uh, the circuit? So at point A, which is um, the top middle of the circuit, and point B, I'm going to calculate their potentials. So we start at 20 volts because we've gone up from 0 volts to one side of the battery to plus 20 on the other. And going through the 300 ohm resistor, that's a voltage drop, so there's a minus sign. The potential difference is calculated with I times R. And I find 8.8442 volts at point A. At point B, 20 volts, I'm going to voltage drop across the 400 ohm. I find 9.5476. 
This also tells me that I4 is now drawn correctly. Current runs from the high potential to the low potential, so from point B to point A. Now, what about point C? Well, on this top branch, point A has a potential of 8.4442 uh, volts. IR drop across the 200 ohm resistor is represented here. I come up with practically zero, nearly zero. At point C, similar calculation, we start at the potential at point B, the drop across the 500 ohm resistor, and again, I'm practically at zero. These are just due to round off errors in my number. So we have uh, checked our work. We do have the case that the uh, uh, currents, the six currents have been found, and we have a uh, correct solution for our, our problem here. And my battery is running low, so I need to uh, stop here and hope you keep practicing your physics problems.